This is going to be a study on the King James Bible versus the Satanic Bibles. And when I say Satanic Bibles, I'm not referring to the Satanic Bible by Anton LaVey. I'm referring to the NIV, the New King James Version, the English Standard Version, the New Living Translation, or any other English Bible other than the King James. And the King James Version is God's preserved word in English. Before you get upset, listen to the whole study. This is very, very important. The modern New Age Bibles will remove whole verses. They will also change the words and the meaning. For example, in 2 Corinthians 2.17, your King James Bible says, For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God speak we in Christ. It's not a big surprise that this verse is changed in the modern New Age Satanic Bibles. The modern Bibles will change the word corrupt to peddling. And the men and women who put together the modern Bibles are corrupting the word of God. So they take out that word corrupt. Romans 1.18 says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth and unrighteousness. The New King James Version changes the word hold to suppress. This is because men who use the modern Bibles don't believe they can presently hold the truth. They believe the truth was only in the originals, meaning the original copy that Moses or Paul or Peter, Matthew, Mark or Luke, or the writer that the writer had when he wrote it. They don't believe that they have the Word of God here today that they can hold in their hands. But the new Bibles, they change major doctrine in the Bible. They don't just take out the these and the thous. Matthew one twenty five in your King James says, And knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. The New Age Satanic Bibles, such as the NIV, the NASB, the ESV, or any ten Bibles you pick out, will remove firstborn from Matthew one twenty five, where it says, And knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son. This would go along with the Catholic teaching that Mary didn't have more children, if you take out that firstborn. Mary did have more children after Jesus Christ. But these new Bibles, they want to cater to everyone's beliefs. That way they can sell more. If you are a Christian, then I'm assuming you believe the Lord Jesus Christ was sinless. Did you know Jesus Christ got angry, yet he never sinned? He practiced the Bible verse, Be ye angry and sin not. However, the new Bibles make Jesus a sinner. Matthew 5.22 in your King James Bible says, But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Notice the phrase, without a cause. The new versions, the satanic Bibles, will remove the phrase, without a cause. And Jesus got angry, but it wasn't without a cause. But by them removing that phrase, it puts Jesus Christ in danger of the judgment. You see how precise the King James Bible is. It didn't remove without a cause. That's important that that's in there. You say that's being nitpicky. But if that wasn't in there, it says that whosoever is, is angry with his brother shall be in danger of the judgment. That would in, include people who were angry with a cause. But since it says... Without a cause, that lets us know who's in danger of the judgment. The new version, versions of the Bible remove that, basically saying Jesus Christ wasn't without sin. And see how precise the King James Bible is. If you believe Jesus Christ is sinless, which I know you do, even if you use a new version, get a King James Bible. Okay, next, do you believe Jesus Christ came to seek and save that which was lost? I do, and I know you do, even though you're using a new version of the Bible. But this is why I use the King James Version. If you have the New International Version, the verse is removed. Okay, do you believe it is easy to be saved and enter into the kingdom of God? I believe it's easy to be saved, 
one day I knew I was a sinner. I knew I was going to hell. I came to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner. I believed in my heart to salvation and got saved. It was easy. It was easy as taking a drink of water and all the other things that people say. Mark ten twenty four in your King James says, And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answereth again and saith unto them, Children, how hard is it for them to, that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? The NIV, the New American Standard, and others will remove the phrase that trust in riches. So it will say, how hard is, is it for them to enter into the kingdom of God? Instead of how hard is it for them that trust in riches? To enter into the kingdom of God. It's not hard to be saved. Do you believe that Jesus Christ's father was God? This would make Jesus Christ equal with God? The King James Bible teaches that God was his father. While the new versions will subtly attack the deity of Jesus Christ. Luke 2.33 in your King James Bible says, And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him, referring to Jesus. Your King James does not call Joseph his father in Luke 2.33, but the New Bibles will say his father and his mother marveled. And this is a subtle attack at the deity of Jesus Christ. Because if Joseph was Jesus Christ's father, then Jesus Christ was not God in the flesh. And he was a sinner just like me and you if Joseph was his father. And if you believe Jesus Christ is God in the flesh, then stick with the King James Bible. Just pretty much any person who knew, uses a new version, they believe that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh and that Jesus Christ's father is God. Why do they choose the new versions of the Bible? If you are a Bible believer, then you want every word of God. You don't want verses taken out and the precious words taken out of the book. The new Bibles like the NIV, the New American Standard, and all the others will remove words and even remove part of verses like Luke 4 and verse 4, which says in your King James, And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. They will remove by every word of God because they don't have every word of God. They've cut it here and cut it there, changed the meaning here, changed the meaning there, took out a whole verse here, took out a whole verse there. They take out the parts they don't like and leave the parts that they do like or change the parts that they don't like. Did, did you know that Jesus rebukes the devil in the Bible? He says, Get thee behind me, Satan, in Luke 4 and verse 8. However, in the New World Translation and other Satanic Bibles, it removes this verse where Satan is rebuked. And who would want to remo remove this? The devil. Uh, John six forty seven. Jesus says, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. The NIV says, he who believes has everlasting life, making it sound like you can believe anything. Your King James says, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. The NIV, He who believes has everlasting life. That's because these New Age people, the false prophets, they say if some person, no matter where he is, if he believes in a God, then he's saved and in the body of Christ. That's false. That's false doctrine. The Bible says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's Jesus. No man comes to the Father but by Jesus Christ. He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Not, that, not he who believes has everlasting life. It does matter which God you believe in because there is one Savior. In John 10.30 Jesus Christ says, I and my Father are one. And that is what the King James Bible says. In the New Bibles, it says, I and the Father are one. A sneaky attack on God being the Father of Jesus Christ. 
I want it to say, I and my father are one, not I and the father are one. You say, well, that's being nitpicky. Once again, you're not considering the word of God as precious as you should. In Acts chapter 8, Philip goes to talk with a man that is the Ethiopian eunuch. And in the middle of, of Acts chapter 8, the Ethiopian eunuch gets saved. And the new Bibles will remove the key verse about him being saved. In Acts 8, 37, it says, And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And this entire verse is removed from most Bibles. And this is satanic to remove a verse about a man being saved. Listen to this verse. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So this man believed in his heart to salvation. Instead of keeping that verse in there, they removed the verse. The new Bibles will go Acts chapter 8.36 Acts chapter 8.38. I mean, when you're reading the book of Acts and you see 8.37 ain't there, what do you think in your mind? Uh, the entire verse is removed. In Romans 13.9, Paul says, Thou shalt not bear false witness. The new Bibles remove this because they are a bunch of false witnesses themselves. And what I believe is, Possibly the worst of all, they removed the blood. Colossians 1.14 in your King James Bible says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. In the modern Bibles it will say, In whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins, and the blood is gone. Sure, it mentions the blood in other places of the new versions. It may mention the deity of Jesus Christ in other places in the new versions where as in some parts it takes it out. But just because it keeps it in some places and removes it in some places doesn't make it acceptable. Why would you want a Bible that removes the deity of Jesus Christ in any part? Why would you want a Bible that removes the blood of Jesus Christ in any part of the Bible? Why would you want a Bible that makes it where it looks like Jesus is a sinner in any part of it? Why wouldn't you want the King James who sticks true to the fundamentals of what we believe all throughout the whole thing. There's never a part in the King James where it makes Jesus seem like just a normal man and not God in the flesh. And I know pretty much probably 99 out of 100 people who use the new versions of the Bible believe in the deity of Christ. They believe in the sinlessness of Christ. They believe in the virgin birth of Christ. They believe in the blood of Jesus Christ. Yet they choose the new versions of the Bible because that's the cool thing to do because they say it makes it easier to understand. A guy told me that he got saved and he got the King James and everybody was telling him he needs to be King James only and he said he read it and he just couldn't understand it. He says now that he's got the new versions of the Bible, he can just understand it so much easier. The new versions aren't easier to, to understand I mean, is it that hard to know what thee and thou means, really? It doesn't take long to know what that means. You probably knew what that, the words meant right when you started reading the Bible. You're just lazy, and you don't want to study. In 1 Timothy 3.16, it says, God was manifest in the flesh. The Satanic Bibles say, He appeared in a body. Who is He? Why can't they say God? That is a sneaky attack on the deity of Jesus Christ. I want my Bible to say, God was manifest in the flesh. We need to remember which Bible is right. We need to read the right Bible. We need to inform other Christians about which Bible is right. Pastors and teachers and evangelists should have whole sermons and lessons dedicated to showing the body of Christ which Bible is right. Uh, many men are straying away from the King James. You have people that have been King James Bible believers from way back 20 years ago that are coming out and saying, I'm no longer King James anymore. I'm using the ESV. The King James only movement is a cult. 
It's uh, King James. They call it the King James Onlyism cult, and they're attacking people that are sticking up for the King James, like Sam Gipp, uh, Ruckman, Gail Ripplinger, and all those famous King James defenders. They're com- coming out against them and calling them heretics and cult leaders. Maybe some people are just King James because their dad was King James only or their mother was King James only or they had grandparents that would use the King James and they used the King James for that reason and never learned why that they're King James. I guarantee you that most people in the churches today, if they use the King James Bible, they're only King James because that's what their parents use. They have no idea what the new versions are all about. So they, they're they okay with the new versions. But they don't know why it is so important to know what is the Word of God. And that is why they will be easily swayed to accept or to use the new versions of the Bible. But God promised to preserve His Word. If you read Psalms twelve six and 7, it says, The words of the Lord are pure words. As silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times, thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Matthew twenty four thirty five Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Psalms one thirty eight two I will worship toward thy holy temple, and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth, for thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. The Word of God is obviously important to God. It's His words. Why are churches and Christians not making a bigger deal about the King James? The lack of care for the King James Bible has turned into contemporary and worldly churches everywhere. The majority of churches, even where I live, don't use the King James. And if they do, they don't know why they use the King James other than their mother and their daddy used it. And there are people who go to church for 40 plus years and they don't know any Bible. They don't know any Bible doctrine. They know, I'm supposed to do this. I'm supposed to do that. Don't do this. Don't do that. They don't know any Bible doctrine. They don't know which Bible's right. They still think the new versions are acceptable. They use the King James, but they say they're okay with the new versions because they only take out the these and the thous. How many times have you heard that? I heard that growing up in a church as a lost and a worldly Christian for about 13 years. And I was deceived by new versions for about a week or two after being saved. Somebody showed me the truth. I actually saw the truth on a website, the Jesus is Savior website. One of the many things that are on that website, I clicked it. It showed me the truth about the King James. I've been King James ever since. I've never had any doubt in my mind that the King James Bible is right and the other versions are wrong. And I'm just confused about how people don't see it. And I'm confused about why people don't think it's important to let others know and make a big deal about the King James. A lot of people have told me I'm just being nitpicky. I've had people in my family tell me that it just changes the these and the vows and it's not that big of a deal and I'm being overboard. You're too extreme. You have to be extreme about the words of God because all the versions of the Bible say something different. If God promised to preserve His Word and they say something different and they contradict each other, then that means He didn't preserve His Word. If you believe that the Word of God is only is only 100% correct in the originals, then you don't believe He preserved it and you don't believe that you actually have everything God said today. All I believe as a King James Bible believer is that Jesus Christ, God him in the flesh, preserved his word all the way throughout et- eternity. It's still here. It's preserved. I can hold it in my hand. I don't believe that he let any of it just vanish or be changed or have a scribal error. I believe... It's a 100% pure word of God. What is wrong with that? Why is that so taught against? It's because the devil 
does not like the Word of God and he teaches others, he gets in other people's mind and tells them that the Word of God is not still here 100%. But if you're a King James Bible believer, then you're not going to change any part of the Bible. I mean, even Schofield in his notes, he'll change the Word of God. And I've had uh, somebody tell me, he said, the, the King James is 100% right. It's preserved. It's without error. And then he pointed to a Schofield note where Schofield changed of word. And he said, well, see, it's, there is little things like that that's not right. No, Schofield's not right. The Bible says, let God be true, but every man a liar. When Schofield goes away from the King James, he's a liar. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That don't mean Schofield was a bad guy. That just means he is a lying dog, just like me and just like you. The only thing is, he went way out of line by saying God was wrong in his book by making a word, that word, that certain word instead of the word he wanted it to be. And the words that he changed was was just stupid. But this has been the King James Bible versus the Satanic Bibles. And I hope and pray that after hearing this, and having your eyes opened to the truth about how the deity of Jesus Christ is changed, attacked, the blood of Jesus Christ is removed, whole verses are removed, a man's salvation is removed right out of his mouth because they take out the whole verse. I hope that that's changed your attitude about the King James. I hope that will make you switch to King James if you're using the new Bibles. And I hope that this will encourage you to tell your congregation or your friends in Christ which Bible's right and make a big deal about the King James and make a bold stand for the King James Bible.